Welcome to Integrated Medicine Perspective. I'm Dr. Wendy Liu. This is the third video on the topic of complete and balanced nutrition. This time, I would like to focus on several nutritional issues that I encounter quite frequently in my clinic. One is adequate calcium intake uh, that can be problematic for both men and women. Um, the other is adequate iron intake, especially in young women. So this time, I'm going to use an example of a young 25-year-old woman. Let's see her weight and uh, uh, menstrual cycle are both normal. Uh, this young woman has a problem with facial acne, especially in the week before her menstrual cycle starts. She likes the idea of inflammation index of foods. Uh, she read about that animal products tend to have a higher inflammation index and uh, plant-based ones tend to have lower inflammation index. So she decides to change her diet to a vegan diet. Her diet will include various whole grains, legumes, fruits and vegetables, and a small amount of nuts and seeds. So will her dietary plan provide an adequate and balanced nutrient intake? Let's first take a look at the detail of her dietary plan. Her breakfast includes oatmeal one cup, soy uh, milk one cup, an apple, and uh, one tablespoon of peanut butter. Her lunch includes a cup of white rice and a cup of tofu at her workplace cafeteria. She would have picked brown rice if her workplace cafeteria had it. Her congee at dinner includes half a cup of brown rice and half a cup of red beans. She also eats one cup of cooked spinach and one orange for dinner. Now, for people who are not familiar with kanji, kanji is a common Chinese porridge which can be made with grains with or without beans. The food amount is calculated based on maintaining a body weight of 60 kilograms, uh, which is 132 pounds. All right, how does her nutrient intake look? Except for vitamin B12, all other nutrient intake looks fairly adequate and balanced. Indeed, there are several nutrient intakes that we needed to pay special attention to uh, in a vegan diet. One thing, obviously, is vitamin B12. This young woman's uh, vegan diet does not provide adequate B12 intake. We needed to add B12-containing foods to her diet, such as purple seaweeds and uh, shiitake mushrooms. One thing that is quite inconvenient for people who are on vegan diets is that our food labels usually uh, do not provide information on B12 content. So people who are on vegan diet should consult uh, their family physicians on monitoring uh, blood B12 level on a regular basis. But B12 deficiency does not develop acutely after switching to a vegan diet uh, or much more plant-based diet, B12 deficiency does not uh, develop immediately. It usually takes a year or two, uh, even several years to develop uh, vitamin B12 deficiency. Uh, another thing that is important is that high dose vitamin B12 supplementation is often unnecessary uh, in people on vegan diets uh, because the efficacy of B12 absorption is related to the dose we take. Uh, when we take uh, B12 within the recommended dose, uh, the recommended daily allowance of B12 is 2.4 microgram. When our intake is within this range, the absorption rate is about 56%. But if the B12 intake is within 500 microgram to 1,000 microgram, which is often the dose in many vitamin B complex and multivitamin supplements, the absorption rate is only around 1.3%. Uh, in the future, I will share some long-term health concern with high-dose vitamin B12 supplementation. Dr. Rolf uh, Carmel has a very 
a thorough review on vitamin B12 deficiency and um, replacement. So I will put uh, the link to his article below. Besides um, B12, there are other nutrient intake uh, we need to pay attention to in a vegan diet. One is about adequate intake of essential amino acid, which can be problematic in a vegan diet. So let's take a look at how this young woman achieve adequate um, essential amino acid intake in her vegan diet. Her food choices of tofu and soy milk contribute to the majority of the essential amino acid intake. Indeed, essential amino acid of soy is comparable to meat. Soy foods are excellent choices in a vegan diet to help with adequate essential amino acid intake. So this is one of the nutritional advantages of tofu. The second is calcium. Calcium salts are needed to make tofu. Firm tofu especially has a good amount of calcium. A cup of firm tofu has a higher amount of calcium than a cup of milk. So if a person's diet that does not have dairy or cold water fish on a regular basis, adding tofu will help with calcium intake. The final nutrient that I would like to talk about is iron intake, especially in young women. For adult men and postmenopausal women, the recommended daily allowance of iron is eight milligram, but that is 18 milligram for young women and 27 milligram for pregnant women. So young women especially need to pay attention to adequate iron intake. Now, for our example today, how does this young woman achieve adequate iron intake with her vegan diet? Let's take a look. Tofu and cooked spinach are both rich in iron and help push the iron intake to reach the higher requirement in this young woman. Now, this young woman's uh, vegan diet is quite a Chinese style, or I should say Asian style. Tofu is not a common food in Western diet. For people who are on a Western style vegan diet, adding tofu seems to be a good idea to help with adequate intake of essential amino acid, calcium, and iron. Thanks for watching. Please leave comments and questions. I shall see you soon.